Good evening. I'm calling the Monday, October 28th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting to order. Will everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. All right. Uh, first item on the agenda this evening is the approval of tonight's agenda. Do you have any requests for changes? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I'll move to approve the agenda. All right. Second. And a second. All those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Right. Agenda is approved. Uh, next up, approval of minutes from the meeting held on Monday, October 14th, 2019. Do I have any requests for edits or concerns with the minutes? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the Planning Commission meetings from the meeting held on Monday, October 14th, 2019. Do I have a second? Second it. Okay. All right. All those in favor, approve the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Moving on, we have a public hearing this evening, 11,000 Viking Drive parking ramp 2019-16. This request for planned unit development concept review on 16.2 acres. Plan unit development district amendment with waivers on 16.2 acres. Site plan review on 16.2 acres. Will the proponent of the project please come forward and. Good evening. Good evening. If you would state your name for the record and please tell us about your project. Good evening, Scott Peterson, Vice President of Development for United Properties, representing ownership at 651 Nicollet Mall, Suite 450, Minneapolis, Minnesota. 55402. First and foremost, I'd like to thank staff and the Planning Commission for hearing our application this evening. Brief history on United Properties. We're a 100 year old real estate development company founded and headquartered in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We have a successful track record of numerous developments in the Twin Cities markets. In front of the Commission tonight is an application for a new above grade parking structure located at 11000 Viking Drive. The basis of the application is to provide increased parking ratio on site to better meet the current parking demands of the corporate office users. The application consists of a PUD concept review, a PUD district amendment, and a site plan review. Please note the structure is proposed in as, as an accessory building, not a primary building. This parking structure will be increasing our parking on site from roughly 723 to roughly 1,042 stalls. We have reviewed and support staff's recommendations. And with that, we have a team of consultants here to walk through some more detailed uh, questions and concerns. And I'll hand the podium over to Mark Williamson. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Williamson. Yes, good evening. Thank you. Um, my name is Mark Williamson. I'm with Edward Farr Architects, 7710 Golden Triangle Drive in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. With me uh, also tonight is Pete Morrow with Sampatuck Civil Engineers and Landscape for the project. The uh, purpose of the project, as was just noted, uh, is to increase the parking stall count per a higher market uh, demand than the original user. Currently it's at 2.77 stalls per 1,000 square feet. We're increasing that to 3.59 per 1,000 and allowing for a proof of uh, parking for a city ratio greater than city ratio of 4.21 per thousand. There are the parking stall counts as you can see down at the bottom of the ratios. The ramp will be located on the far eastern side of the site In 2003, there was a phase two office building site plan review, uh, part of the PUD that was approved at that time, allowed for two parking decks to, uh, in future phases to be constructed. Phase two also allowed for a extension of the surface parking on that east side. Our building will be placed over that uh, existing parking surface area that was uh, constructed as part of the phase two allowance. We are requesting the variances and waivers as mentioned. 
allowable height, number of exterior materials, parking stall and aisle dimensions. For the parking stall aisle and dimensions, we are uh, asking to be less than the city required per zoning, but please note that these dimensions that we are propose proposing are greater than, than uh, recommended by the, both the Urban Land Institute and the National Parking Association as published in their book, Dimensions of Parking. Building height. The building tower, or the parking ramp will be six inches higher than the allowed max height of 15 feet at the perimeter and the street frontage. Level C at the center will be 26 feet high and uh, proof of parking for level C if we were to complete that in the future uh, would also bring that uh, perimeter to 26 feet. And then further down the line if we were to add a elevator tower that would uh, go up to 42 uh, feet I believe. Mm -hmm. Exterior materials for the, for the ramp will mimic the existing buildings on site. Uh, we'll use precast, architectural precast, that will consist of uh, buff or cream colored flat uh, cement work uh, to mimic the, uh, the plaster uh, facing on the office towers. And the, the precast spandrels will also include thin brick, which will match the building's exterior brickwork. In addition to the waiver request, I'd just like to point out that uh, for green infrastructure and initiatives, we have a few uh, items that uh, how we're going to preserve natural vegetation. Again, we're locating the, the uh, project on an existing surface lot, minimizing impact on the uh, planted areas, preserving the wetland buffers between uh, the uh, property Spatana Lake and adjacent wetland stormwater ponds. Stormwater management, we're actually adding pervious surface as opposed to adding impervious surface by virtue of added parking islands in existing surface lot and uh, exist added landscape area around the entry and ends of the building. Stormwater management, we are also minimizing impact on the site and surrounding uh, plantings by locating the uh, stormwater collection system under the ramp structure. This will collect the uh, stormwater runoff, slowing it down before it leaves the, uh, the property and also filtering it. It will uh, uh, go uh, into the ground water below the ramp as, it, uh, as it's slowly filtered out. And to recap, that is the, the parking structure with the uh, buildings, current buildings in the background. Are there any questions? Questions from the commission? So one question that on that picture is just up the, the center part of the ramp, that's the 26 feet? Yes. Yes, at that uh, far east end. Okay. Right. Yeah, Commissioner Mitty. Um, I have two questions. One is how um, will the snow removal be addressed on the ramp? And then uh, my second question is, so um, I think it was referred to as phase three. Uh, the original plans had had this kind of future potential expansion of an office building itself. Can you explain where that is on the, or where that was on the site? Um, and if that's still, you know, I, I know that's not the plan to move forward with that, but but how, do, how does this ramp yes. uh, relate to yes. that? Uh, your first question regarding the snow removal. Uh, we w are planning to uh, remove the snow off to the southeast corner of the ramp as it was originally planned and, uh, and done with the snow off the surface. It was stockpiled, actually stockpiled on that surface lot, but uh, our original plans did show snow removal being in the southeast corner off that surface lot. So any snow collected and dumped off the uh, top level of the ramp go in that southeast corner toward the storm ponds. Regarding phase three office tower, the uh, original SPR from 2003 did show that 
on this end of the site, mm -hmm. but we're kind of flip-flopping where they showed the phase two ramp parking with this property, part of the property. Uh, phase three office towers are in very rough terms still, just as they were in 2003. There is no current plans to to expand that way. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Commissioner. Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I have a question on the uh, parking stall and aisle dimensions. Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> I'm kind of curious to know uh, that you're asking for the uh, stalls perpendicular to the dry aisle only four inches. Uh, uh, I'm wondering why why it's not a five inches or six inches. We are not asking for a waiver of five or six. Um, the the stall dimensions um, are just a matter of the uh, mathematics of uh, the uh, stall shape. Um, I'm sorry, which dimension were you asking about in particular? The oh, width, the you, width. Okay, so you have a specific relationship. Uh, that we're doing uh, 75 degree parking in the main traffic aisles. Um, yeah. City requirement for the uh, the aisle width is 17 foot 10, and uh, I'm sorry, we're providing 17 10. That's a foot larger than the uh, Urban Land Institute recommended. Okay, thank you. Richard, yep. thank I have two questions for you. Yes. Under the category of landscaping, you mentioned a mixture of native and non-native trees species. Could you elaborate on the non-native species that you're contemplating? I'm sorry, I'm not uh, particular to the landscape. Pete, would you like to? Good evening, if you would state your name for the record, please. Good evening, I'm Pete Moreau from Samatech, address, uh, 411 Jefferson Avenue South, Edina. <clears throat> Your question uh, with the landscaping, just pull up and make sure I'm speaking correctly here. So it's a variety of red maple, uh, birch, linden, spruce, black hill spruce um, for the conifer trees, and then some crab apples and the, um, excuse me, Thornless, the hawthorn for ornamental trees. Does that answer? Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a second question? I have a second question. Okay. <laughs> With respect to sustainability components, mm -hmm. you indicated energy efficient LED fixtures. What will be the source of power for those LED fixtures? At this time, that would be the standard electrical supply. Was solar considered as an option for a renewable energy source? Uh, it was not for this particular project. Um, putting solar on, on the top of the ramp would encumber future expansion vertically um, to, uh, to relocate that. I cannot speak for further amenities on the site that, that may be occurred. Um, I would like to say that uh, we are planning on doing two uh, electrical vehicle charging stations and also um, the uh, LED lighting throughout the ramp, yes. So you're saying in effect that solar is precluded because of the potential extension, vertical extension of the ramp? Yes. Do you have any study or basis for projecting that you would need another level? It's just future proof of parking. Uh, again, we could, could complete the uh, level C at, at some future point if necessary to uh, reach city minimum parking. And uh, the, we're oversizing the structure of the parking ramp so that uh, we are uh, safely building it for allowing to expand at some point in the future if necessary. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Julie, would you be walking us through the planner's report? Yes, sir. 
Mr. Chair, members of the commission, as stated, the applicant is requesting approval of a PUD uh, as well as waivers as a part of that PUD and a site plan review in order to construct a parking ramp on the site as proposed. The applicant is uh, amending or requesting to amend an approved plan from the early 2000s that did show um, not only a parking ramp but potential for additional buildings in this area. As a part of the application, they are requesting several waivers, as noted. Uh, one is with regard to uh, parking stall dimensions and parking aisle dimensions. One is with regard to uh, building materials, and one is with regard to building height. Staff is recommending approval of the project as proposed in your staff report with the um, additional staff recommendation, which is in your report about the inclusion of two electric vehicle charging stations at the time of construction. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Commissioner Kirk. I do have a question, uh, perhaps for Mr. Rue. Um, the, the recommendations based on the urban, urban land planning and Parking, I'm sorry, I didn't write down the, the, the exact title, but of the reference book, are those, are those commonly, uh, is, is that a typical reference for, for, for such things? Is that considered a, a reliable authority? I apologize for my ignorance on the subject. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, um, we're more familiar with the city ordinance, I guess. That's what we typically follow. So um, I haven't uh, seen these standards, but um, they're, they're national institute or um, planning level. It's, I, would, I would just say that it's urban, so I'm um, not sure what that means, but obviously we had some concerns about the parking aisles, uh, the drive aisles and the parking stalls based on um, larger vehicles and so forth but the uh, this demand this site is also restricted with the uh, you know kind of the setback from the lake as far as as well as setback from the from the roadway so um, I think they tried to make it all work uh, the best they could so sounds like it's a reasonable compromise in your mind uh, the only one I guess is most of them are inches uh, the one that's kind of significant is the drive aisle I think was like four feet yeah. So that's more significant. If there's any that would concern us. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Higgins. Yes. On page seven of the staff report, there's information regarding the um, traffic engineer's approval of a traffic management plan. And looking at that site briefly when I did, um, it just occurred to me how large an area that is and how many cars are coming and going. Um, and then the, the item under A says the developer shall implement the traffic demand management uh, plan at the site to reduce traffic congestion. Could you go into that at a little bit more detail as to what that might involve? I, it just occurred to me I don't know anything about the pattern of work and times of arrival and departure of people there and of other people arriving during the day. but. It, there, there was this just one access place where I saw to come in and go out to get into the parking area. And it seemed like for the amount of, of activity that that parking ramp would involve, I just wondered what you thought about what this part of the plan um, would raise as interest for the city to look at going forward. Because it says here that they have to receive your, your approval from the engineer's um, avenue to um, s to get a traffic management plan underway. If, and I don't know if that's sort of an ordinary thing that has to happen in all developments or if this is unusual for this particular one or what else you can tell us about that. Um, a traffic demand management plan is pretty typical for large office buildings or larger uses. Mm -hmm. um, what it does is it, it uh, you create a document that um, and they ensure that they will um, follow through on those on those suggestions. Uh, there can be many different things. Uh, there's and there's like the 494 quarter commission can help with a um, with some of those um, plans, uh, provide some 
um, ideas on what to do, also provide some incentives um, or incentives for the employer to use. Uh, such things as uh, carpool, preferential par uh, parking for carpools, uh, carpool um, organizational type things, um, shower facilities in the, in, in the building so that people can drive their bikes to work or walk to work or whatever. Uh, and be able to, uh, so lockers and that kind of stuff. Um, there's a number of different things. Uh, carpooling, like I mentioned, um, um, varying hours within their business so that you know you don't let everybody out at the same time where they stagger work hours or uh, so many things like that. Um, you, did, you did mention there's one access, but there's actually another uh, access on the west side of the ramp as well as one off Viking Drive that's uh, on the south side of the ramp. So did that answer your question? Yes, thank okay. you. Commissioner uh, I have a question on this. Uh, uh, one of the waivers being asked for uh, narrowing the, uh, by four feet dial width, uh, is, is it, uh, uh, there's a note saying that the judging staff has some reservations on this thing. Uh, I, was, I was wondering, do we have a metric uh, between uh, uh, the width and aisle uh, width and the stall depth and, and the intensity of the traffic? Is it something that uh, are you feeling comfortable with that? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, um, as was presented in the staff report as well as the information by the applicant, there is a waiver being requested uh, to the aisle width. And as we have at a staff level have reviewed that information, uh, we have discussed that, compared it against the metric or the requirement that is within city code. And because uh, city code does provide those metrics at a different uh, range, if you will, than the angle of parking that is proposed, on this project, there was a bit of an interpretation that had to be made, as is referenced in your staff report. And staff does agree with the interpretation, the application of that interpretation, how it was calculated. The concern that was raised by uh, some of the staff that participates in the staff review is with regard to the uh, reduction in the aisle width. The concern is not uh, so far reaching that staff is not recommending approval of the waiver. Rather, we wanted to provide information on the record stating that there was a concern about it. It would certainly be the responsibility of the property owner to manage how traffic circulates through that parking ramp. If there were to be concerns, as uh, Mr. Rue mentioned, with larger vehicles, that may cause them to have to uh, do some redesign or maybe some signing about where larger vehicles are best parked in order to help facilitate circulation throughout uh, throughout the parking ramp but staff is as an overall statement recommending approval of the development with that uh, cautionary note if you will to the property owner that there may be some things that they may need to do in the future if it becomes <coughs> an issue based on how the site is used okay thank okay. you Julie a follow-up question would the uh, city's perspective be different if it was a retail area with pardon me I if missed it was those. if it was retail um, would it be different? Would you be more concerned if, with that waiver? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, potentially, uh, you know, it would be more of a concern in retail because of the larger amount of turnover um, that could occur, at, you know, as well as just the different peak times as compared to an office building. Also, I think of of uh, consideration here is the fact that if there were to be some concerns about how it operates, that uh, I, I hate to use this term because it sounds strong, but that those failures or that concern would ha be happening on private property. It would not be spilling out into the city's public right of way and causing concern where that might be the case with a commercial development. I'd like just to piggyback on that because I was going to make that same point if Julie hadn't. I, I think that I would be much more concerned if, if it were one retail or two had the potential of spilling out. In, in other words, the developer, <coughs> is developing the land for their own use and their own clients. And I think the city has pointed out that there is some possibility, some concern on, on some fronts, but it's completely internal to their, their parking structure and frankly to their employees. So for me, that, that mitigates my concern. 
in the sense that it won't spill out onto the city city streets or the city right away. I, I agree with you. That's why I wanted to just have the city's perspective on it. So, and then one other follow-up question. So we are, if we approve it, we are approving the waiver for up to 42, not for the current design in front of us, right? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, as the staff report is written and the recommendation is provided to you, yes, the waiver would allow for an ultimate building height on that parking ramp of up to 42 feet. That could, of course, be constructed in phases, and that would allow as additional levels of the parking ramp were to be added that the project could go through an administrative review of a building permit rather than coming back through this public process. Okay. Thank you. The questions from the commission right. this is a public hearing if anyone would like to come forward and speak for or against this project please do so now all right seeing none entertain a motion to close the public hearing i'll move to close the public hearing second that all right i have a motion and a second all those in favor of closing public hearing say aye aye, aye. 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 opposed all right public hearings closed further discussion okay. commissioner ready so I'll put in my two cents on the parking. Um, the the math they provided from ULI, I mean, I'm very familiar with that and it is a nationally recognized, you know, standard um, for there. So that, I, for me, provided a lot of comfort. Um, the other thing I did was I looked up the city of Minneapolis's parking requirements. Um, I know they urge actually like really small, tight parking. So, so in my head, I'm like, I hope this is bigger than the Minneapolis minimum sizes because I know Minneapolis is super tight. And when I looked it up, these dimensions are larger stalls than you find in the Minneapolis city code. Um, so that comforted me there. Um, one project I actually worked on at one time in Minneapolis and it was a retail project. We had a 20 foot drive aisle for two way traffic. Mm -hmm. And this is 17 foot 10, so about almost 18 feet for one way traffic. So I don't have really any concern with the drive aisle um, or the parking sizes based on sort of, you know, again, all of these, the ULI information and, and other things that I looked up. Um, so I feel I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Um, I, the other thing is too, I, I wanted to commend the developer, I guess, uh, on, on just the amount of parking, the, the, the ratio that they'll be uh, increasing to 3.6. Four per thousand, which is the city requirement, is what you find kind of all over the place. It's the, the standard. Um, but we're seeing that that's actually, you know, a little bit on the high side. So I'm glad we're not, you know, making them build more than really needs to be. So they have that ability. Um, and a lot of it does depend on a tenant. If you have uh, some like a call center going in there versus, you know, some other type of office use, there can be a wide range. But I, I think actually, from what I've seen on my end of things, 3.5 per thousand is tends to be sufficient. So kind of seeing that reiterated from them again, um, just seconds what I'm seeing sort of in my world on the outside. And then I, I was, you know, I, I, the design wise, it's a parking ramp, but I, I'm glad it matches the kind of the brick and then that lighter color, it'll reflect that. So um, overall, I was, I was good with all the waivers and everything for this. Thank you. Look, I think it's, uh, Commissioner Meddy, I, I think it's great to hear your personal experience on that. That makes me a lot more comfortable on the parking structure. On the other two waivers, I, I agree. I think the two instead of three class one materials, I'm fine with that as it matches the existing building. I think doing a really nice job there. So I, I think that's great. And the height, you know, I think that's something we're gonna have to live with in Eden Prairie now is, is you know, a little more height. And frankly, in this part of, of Eden Prairie, I'm comfortable with the 42 foot um, height as well. So I, I again, think it's a, a, a well-designed uh, addition to the community. Thank you, Commissioner Kirk. Other comments? All right. Um, would anyone like to make a motion? I move to close the public hearing. We already did that? We closed it. <laughs> and I move to recommend approval for a planned unit development concept review on 16.2 acres, planned unit development amendment with waiver on 16.2 acres, and site plan review on 16.2 acres 
based on plans stamp dated October 11th, 2019, and the staff report dated October 23rd, 2019. All right, I have a com motion from Commissioner Weber. Do I have a second? Second. Second for Commissioner Kirk. All those in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Opposed? Would anyone like to abstain? All right. Congratulations, Project Moose Ward. Good luck. All right, next up we have a planner's report regarding historic Yorkville and Bloomington Road local heritage preservation designation. Julie, will you be taking this one? Yes, sir. Uh, I'll provide a brief introduction before kicking it off. Uh, David Lindahl, the staff liaison to the Historical Preservation Commission, and Mr. Thorpe, a representative from the Historical Preservation Commission, HPC, are here to present this evening. The HPC has been dedicating a lot of work and effort to uh, designating a segment of the uh, historic Yorkville and Bloomington Road Trail on city-owned property as a local uh, historic designation. As a part of that process, the HPC is required to hold a public hearing on the request as well as make a recommendation to the City Council. What the city council, or excuse me, what the planning commission is asked to do this evening is to make a recommendation on whether or not the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan. And as you're all aware, since we've just recently gone through the comprehensive plan process, there was a fair amount of effort and attention brought to the fact that the city uh, places a priority on the preservation and maintenance of historical features within the community. So uh, David and uh, Mr. Thorpe will go through the presentation to give you a little bit of background, uh, but ultimately the Planning Commission is asked to make a motion to recommend to the City Council that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Great. Thank you. Good evening. Hi. So we've done, uh, at the HPC, have done a lot of research on this uh, Yorkville and Bloomington Road. Uh, and you've got a pretty comprehensive report from some archeologists uh, that started this about, I wanna say three, four years ago. And then uh, we had another city consultant, McDonald and Mack, who had done, a, uh, a, this, had done the nomination paperwork. So you've got all that, I think, in your, packet and I don't know if I need to read this or you can just read it yourself but um, I'm just gonna hear to more kind of talk about some maps and uh, and uh, some things that were going on down by the river uh, in the early early 1850s through the 1860s So what we've got here is, is the town of Hennepin site, and you can see, I'm kind of moving this, uh, the arrow around this town of Hennepin, this kind of odd, an odd-shaped parcel there. It was, uh, it was uh, platted in 1853, and that was a year before the government survey came through that really surveyed the township of Eden Prairie. And prior to that, there was a um, there was an ox cart trail that went through, and that's that blue dotted line that goes through here. Now the um, the ox carts came from came from uh, Winnipeg, Canada, which is north of uh, North Dakota, and they'd come down the west side of the uh, of the Red River till it intersected with the. Minnesota River, then they followed the Minnesota River east to either Fort Snelling or to Mendota, and Mendota was just directly south of Fort Snelling. And uh, they'd, they'd come in a two-wheeled ox cart and piled with furs, and uh, the, back in the, 18, the 1820s and 30s, it was pretty dangerous territory coming, coming through there. But it'd take them 30 days to get from Winnipeg to Fort Snelling, and with these two wheels ox carts, and they were it's two wheels on a wooden shaft with no lubrication. They made a lot of noise, a lot of squeaking, and they'd uh, wear out an, an axle every six days. So they'd need to 
being, be near some trees, they cut down and could whittle a new axle and uh, be on their way again. Well, the Oxcart Trail took two paths. One went south of the river, and that was to get the traders to Mendota. If they wanted to go to Fort Snelling without crossing the river, because crossing the river was kind of a difficult, difficult proposition, they crossed probably in Carver, because there was a rapids there, and they could then take their journey on the north side of the river. And that's, that's where it came through Eden Prairie, and that's that blue dotted line there. So here's the town, plat of the town of Hennepin. This was developed by, the, the west half was developed by John McKenzie, and the east half was, was uh, developed by a consortium of six investors. And they uh, were actively selling lots. There were a lot of, uh, a lot of speculating in lots back in then. And, and the yellow line represents the, uh, the Yorkville and Bloomington Road. And you can see how it, uh, how it kind of followed the road network of the plat. You go to the next one. And this is the uh, 1854 survey, government survey of uh, Eden Prairie. And you can see the town of Hennepin highlighted there. And, and they don't, didn't really show the extent of Hennepin. That's, that's more of a symbol than, a, uh, than an actual layout of the town. And the yellow line, again, represents the, the trail that went through there. And back in 1853, when the town of Hennepin was developed, there was a warehouse down by the river. There was a blacksmith shop along the trail. And then there was a, a, a tavern and a hotel under construction. And you can see they, they, they draw these, uh, let's see in my arrow there. There we go, maybe. This little thing that looks like a house with a, it's hard to see, but it's, it looks like a house with a chimney with a little trail of smoke coming out of there. That's where the uh, tavern was. Uh, the warehouse was down here by the river, and that little symbol, and then the blacksmith and wagon shop was right about there. So after we had our archaeological study done, and they uh, came up with this um, with this Yorkville and Bloomington Road request in 1863, the uh, residents of Carver asked the state to improve a road so they get their goods to market to Minneapolis. So they took on this, uh, this what they call it, York to, Yorkville to Bloomington Road. And by the way, Yorkville was a settlement along uh, the river just north of Chaska that was competing with Chaska for, uh, for settlers to come in. Ultimately, Chaska won. Yorkville has been incorporated into, into the city of Chaska. And it's just a little bit south of the Gidney pickle plant, if, if you know where that is. So this is a survey that was commissioned by the, by the, the county, Hennepin County. And uh, I found this map in Carver County, actually. Hennepin County lost it somehow. So but this was in an old bound book back in the uh, archives in Carver County. So I was able to put this on a copier and uh, make this kind of a crude copy because that's, that's the best I could do. And you can see this table of, uh, of bearings and distances down here. That's, that was kind of the, the plot of where the road was to go. So I took all that information, I'm a land surveyor by the way, and computed this out to see where it actually fell on the ground. So we can go to the next slide. So this is a, a LIDAR map, and this is a, a, to, a topography map that I got from the city. Very detailed, these are, each one of these lines represents a one foot uh, difference in elevation. And I don't know if you can see this kind of, kind of blank space right through there. And that represents a widening of the contours so when I found that, I, I knew that that was a little flat spot in the, on the side of a real steep hill. And I went, and out, went out and actually found that. And that road extends from, this is the abandoned uh, Riverview Road right here. And it's been washed out right in there. But this old road extends all the way down to where it crossed Purgatory Creek, way down here. It's about 2,000 feet. That roadway still exists. 
The part we're asking for the nomination for is just this part within the, uh, the conservation area. Here's a uh, 1945 aerial photo, and you can kind of see that the road showed up on that. And interestingly enough, there was really no vegetation there because this was all prairie back in the 1850s. And uh, the only trees would have been along the river. So it's, it's, now it is incredibly densely wooded. And this is a, an, an aerial photo that shows where that, uh, the old roadbed is in relationship to the uh, river. And this is the area again right in here where we're asking for the nomination. And there's what it looks like today, heavily wooded. So what we're trying to do is, is raise awareness uh, so that that road doesn't get damaged any further because it has been. There was a big sewer line that went across there and, and damaged it. There was a big uh, sewer washout that went uh, a, few, a few years back that, that also washed away part of that road. And it's, it's uh, that actually the Bloomington, the, the Yorkville Bloomington Road was only in existence for 17 years. It was, uh, it was abandoned probably f because of erosion, because it's a real, it's a real sandy soil and it's on a real steep slope. So they uh, rerouted it uh, 17 years later to what's now Riverview Road, where the Riverview Road that's there today. Fascinating. Questions. Um, this particular conservation area is one that has been designated for some period of time, so it's something that has been understood or, you know, uh, been of some interest to the area right here in Eden Prairie, where you were now, where the Heritage Preservation Commission is now saying, this is the part of the road that we'd like to recognize well, we're, we're just asking for the recognition within the park, within the park boundaries because... Yeah, conservation area, is that what? The conservation areas, which is controlled by the park district. Oh, it's the park district. It's a park, well, not the park district, but the city of Eden Prairie Parks. And, oh, okay. And the rest of it is on private property, so we're, okay. we're, not, we're not going there. Sure. What does a designation do for you? As far as you mentioned, trying to control sewers running through there, wouldn't that be... I mean, couldn't we stop that any other right. way? Right. What I well, a lot of this area in the town of Hennepin has been disturbed, not not necessarily by the by the city or by development, but by natural causes. Like the river is eroded the slope away terribly. You know, they had to close Riverview Road through there because of the erosion. But if if we can just make sure everybody knows that it's there, you know, and any any kind of planning that goes on. Um, if, if you're aware that it's there, you're just you're gonna you're gonna preserve it. There'd be a heritage preservation management plan. Right. Af yeah. After we go through the, the uh, city council, then we're gonna develop a, a plan in conjunction with the with the parks of, of what to do with it. And right now, pretty much, it's nothing's being done with it, and maybe nothing needs to be done with it other than make people aware that it's there. Paul, is it geologically unstable enough that you wouldn't want people walking on it on a regular basis? No, I don't think so. It's real hard to get to. Uh, there's a lot of down trees and the like. Um, and people do walk along the river, but, but this is kind of halfway up the slope and, and hard to get to. And, and there's really no place to park to, to get there. So I, I don't think uh, the city wants to kind of advertise it as a walking trail because it's just too hard to get to. Could you take us one iteration back from when it was Oxcart Road, what was there? Were there Native American lands there? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, the, the Eden, uh, Eden Prairie and the, the western part of the state of Minnesota opened up to the settlers in 1852. And this road, the Oxcart Trail, was there from the uh, 18 mid 1820s probably through the 1860s 
So it was a, a, lot, of, a lot of traveling through there. So I guess just thinking, <clears throat> you know, it's about an ox cart trail to Fort Snelling through those lands. I think Fort Snelling has different feelings for different people. So I guess I just want to be cognizant of how Native Americans might think of us designating this heritage preservation. So I don't know if you've had any conversations with any Native American represented we've not. representatives. We've not. So that would be my concern. But I, th I think that's a good point to bring up and just be uh, aware of. Um, you know, maybe something to look into. But I think either way, um, protect, you know, designating this a historically significant area is going to do nothing but protect it for, for anybody. So I think it's a good thing. I agree. It's in a conservation area. It's something the city controls. Why not? It's, it's a piece of history that I didn't know until tonight. And why, why not protect it and at least have the option to do something with it, uh, well-researched to do something that's well researched and appropriate with it, but I would support it strongly. Julie, do we need a motion by the commission or just the understanding that? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, yes, we would uh, like a motion um, by the commission recommending to the city council that the designation be approved uh, as it's consistent with the comprehensive plan. Okay. I'll move approval of a motion for that purpose for the city council to um, make this local um, heritage preservation designation in keeping with the um, recent or the current comprehensive plan provisions. I have a motion for Commissioner Higgins. Do I have a second? I will second her motion. Second for Commissioner Sanctus. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Would anyone like to abstain? All right. It's approved. All right, uh, any members' reports this evening? Yeah. Oh. Julie, did you have no. a planner's report? No, I'll, Mr. Ayer has a member's okay. report. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I have a, I have a short, short one. Uh, uh, <clears throat> just want to bring the attention of all the members. I, uh, my wife and I, uh, we have decided to uh, spend our winter days in a warm place. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we are, we are, actually, we are leaving town uh, by the end of the month, and uh, we'll be back only in, in May of 2020. So, uh, so that was a kind of a thing, and and then uh, then we I realized that I'd be missing too many meetings of our planning commission meeting. So, uh, I spoke to some people, and then realized that I should the right thing for me to do is to resign my planning commission membership, so that the city council can. Uh, Go ahead and then fill that later. So uh, I enjoyed working with you all, and uh, it was a it was a pleasure uh, to be. Um, and uh, we have been uh, in Eden Prairie you worked for nearly 42 years. So um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service to the city. I think it was a pleasure for all of us working with you, Commissioner. Here. So thank you. thank you. Any other members' reports? Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a second. 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 All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. Well,